I'll hand you over to the chairman. I'm ready to get started. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, members of our public looking in on this our meeting of the Planning Committee, Blackpool Council. And of course, we have nine members of the Planning Committee present uh, with our advising officers in legal uh, transport and uh, our head of planning, of course. Um, nice to see Carl Carrington, our head of planning, um, looking in on, on us from, oh, a long way, I, I suspect. Um, but if everybody is happy, um, can hear and see each other, we can make a start with item one on our agenda, which is for declarations of interest. Councillor Hugo. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I um, need to disclose the disclosable pecuniary interest on agenda item eight. Um, Street Life is the applicant and um, I work for Street Life, so I will need to leave on that item. I fully understand. Um, and Councillor Stansfield, do you want to come in, Andrew? Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, I've got um, a, a prejudicial interest on item eight. Uh, Street Life is my employer. And uh, Councillor Debbie Coleman. So, sorry, Chairman, can I just correct Councillor Stansfield? That's a DPI, a disclosable pecuniary interest. It's your it? employer. It's your, if it's your employer. I it was just correcting it because you, you gave me two parts of two different declarations there, so I'm just checking. Street Life's your employer, therefore it's a DPI, exactly the same interest that Councillor Hugo has, okay? Thank you. And Councillor Coleman? Thank you, Chair. Um, mine is item six. Um, I work in a children's home. It's not this particular one, but um, I don't want to take part because obviously it's a competitor of mine. I think that's fully understood and appreciated. Thank you for that. Um, so we conclude uh, that item one and proceed to item two, which of course is uh, for you to approve or otherwise the minutes of our last meeting. Do I have a proposal that we do accept them as a true record that I may sign them accordingly? Anybody against? Right, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and then we turn colleagues to item three uh, on our agenda, uh, which is a report on planning enforcement, appeals lodged and determined. Um, I think there are one or two interesting uh, matters there, not least the three appeals, um, all of which uh, we successfully resisted. And I think there's quite a bit of meat in some of those decisions and the way the inspector uh, has answered and given, I think, um, a bit of encouragement to our efforts. I don't know whether uh, Susan wishes to comment on any of that at all. Do you want to come in, Susan Parker? Sorry, sorry, Chairman. Um, yes, just we have had uh, th these decisions that are um, helpful in terms of our approach on children's accommodation, validating the approach that we've taken to date, and um, the, the ATO is a standard one, and members will remember the, the Shaftesbury Avenue appeal as one that came to committee before, well, I think it was last year. So, yeah, good decisions for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we turn to item four on your agenda, uh, which again is an enforcement update for uh, January and indeed for February on item five. Uh, the work of enforcement doesn't seem to get in less and uh, it's marvellous that they can turn these round at all. It just seems to be a great big uh, mountain for them to climb. Um, but anyway, we're keeping up to date so far as can be. Any comment at all? If not, we can pass on um, to planning and for, uh, sorry, to item six, 
which is the planning application on Seven Home Field Road. Um, yep. I think, Patrick, Chairman, if we if we pause a second, I'm just going to put Councillor Coleman out of the room during this matter and bring in Mr Meehan, who's the applicant. Okay. On Seven Home Field Road. Um, I think um, if, we, if we pause a no. second, I'm just going to put Councillor Coleman out of the room during this matter and bring in Mr. Meehan. M Mr. Meehan, I think you're watching on YouTube. We'll Can you make sure and turn it off? off. Yeah, 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 please. Yeah. Thank you. It's full screen, yeah. Can we be seen and heard? Absolutely. Brilliant. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Meehan. Thank you. Uh, applicant on, on uh, this issue of Seven Homefield Road. Um, our head of uh, planning development is going to address the committee, and then you'll have your opportunity uh, to make your representations. Um, Susan Parker, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'll try and share my screen to get the PowerPoint up and running. There we go. Can everyone see that? Great. So the application at Seven Homefield Road relates to a terrace property on the eastern side of the road. It was brought before members at last month's committee meeting, but was deferred due to the submission of last minute information and a change to the officer report. The information previously submitted has now been published, as has a second statement, and members will see that both have been appended to the update note. It is understood that this property has been in use as a semi-independent supported living facility for the last three years. Um, as this is not long enough, uh, as this is not a long enough period for the use to become lawful and immune from planning enforcement action, this application seeks to regularise that use. The applicant has advised that he did contact the council to inquire as to the need for planning permission prior to opening, although there is no record of this, and that he was told that permission was not necessary, and that advice would have been consistent with the prevailing understanding at that time. The site falls within 400 metres of existing uses meeting similar specialist needs, in this case both a children's residential care home and a semi-independent supported living facility. And as you'll recall from last month, we have had um, specialist legal advice to uh, advise us that they can be classed as similar specialist uses. Um, and as such, the proposal is contrary to planning policy. It is noted that number nine Homefield Road is also in unauthorised use as a semi-independent home. And this is being investigated separately by the council's planning enforcement team. Officers are mindful that the applicant has operated for some time and enjoys a positive working relationship with the council's children's services team. However, it must be remembered that planning permission relates to the land and property and not to the operator. And so the personal characteristics of the applicant cannot be taken into account. Careful consideration must be given to the potential impact of a refusal in this case on the young people accommodated. It is reasonable to describe any minor as a vulnerable person, but perhaps more so young people in the care system. Last month, it was suggested that should the application be refused, any enforcement action would be held in abeyance until all current occupants have turned 18 and left the home. However, the applicant has stated that the property would not be financially viable if only one or two young people were resident. This means that a refusal would likely result in the relocation of vulnerable young people. This hasn't been uh, demonstrated through a financial viability report. Um, this is contained in the statement that's been submitted by the applicant, but it is a consideration to which significant weight could be attached. The applicant has also advised that jobs would be lost as a result of a refusal. The property does not fall within a designated employment area, but this is nevertheless a material consideration. 
And finally, the applicant has indicated that it would not be financially feasible to relocate the operation to a different property, although no detailed explanation of this has been provided. The applicant has stated that he would be willing to enter into a Section 106 legal agreement to give priority to Blackpool youngsters should planning permission be granted. The application, as set out in the officer report, is contrary to policy BH24 of the local plan because it fails the 400 metre rule. Planning law dictates what does and does not constitute a material planning consideration, and the starting point is the development plan. But a planning decision must take all material planning considerations into account, and it must represent a reasonable judgment of planning balance. The weight to be attached to the various material considerations is a matter for the decision maker as long as a reasonable approach is taken. It, it, it is accepted that this is a difficult decision as vulnerable young people could be affected, but this must be balanced against the conflict with policy. It must also be recognised that the decision here will affect how the unauthorised use at number nine Homefield Road is dealt with. It is acknowledged that that operation has not been in situ as long as the business at the application property and the standing of that company with Council's Children's Services team is unknown. However, this is not relevant to this application as planning decisions must be based on the land use and not the identity of an applicant. Semi-independent supported living uses do not require Ofsted registration. As such, planning permission is the only obstacle to a business setting up and operating. Whilst the company at number nine Homefield Road may not be as long established, action taken against that property could equally result in young people being relocated. And so the potential impact on vulnerable young people would apply and be of equal consideration in that case. As such, and on balance, your officers feel that the wider harm of breaching adopted policy at this stage would outweigh the harm to young people. And as such, the officer recommendation as set out in the officer report is one of refusal for the reason given. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Susan, for that introduction. Um, I'm now going to invite uh, Mr. Meehan, the applicant, uh, to make his representations to you. Mr. Meehan. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Myself and our manager, Jordan, uh, have worked relentlessly to prepare, your, to, uh, excuse me, to prepare your documentation, relevant information, just simply try our best to explain why we feel an extenuated circumstance could be given towards our outstanding semi-independent provision, postal key housing. In goodwill, I sent you all a letter to give you a better understanding of our situation. I hope this was received well and helped to explain in detail some of the issues we have had to endure throughout this planning process. We thank you for deferring our, our, our application uh, last month as this has given us more time uh, to help further understand this, this situation, seek legal advice from planning, uh, from planning consultants and also prepare a better speech. Uh, the children are my number one priority of my home. I hope this can be prevailed for our, our short time with you this evening. Up until last month, my only knowledge of what a planning meeting was like was that the viral video related to a certain Paris council that has fascinated the nation. I've educated myself to learn that your meetings, despite the virtual one, are not like this. Uh, they are successful and councils, councils listen to each party with reason and respect. Like I've mentioned before, the children are my top priority. I love my job and I use this term, I use the term job as loosely as possible. It's my life and each day I give 100% to supporting young people. I have I've found my vocation in life and I, I, and I enjoy it. I cannot do this without my small team. I emphasise small because we are a small family run business, not a big company for children to be lost in. We go above and beyond to make sure our young people are given the best chance to succeed in our communities. This does not come easy and it has taken years for us to set up. I'm proud to say that our home has been classed as outstanding. I was a primary school teacher for five years for Blackpool Council and I was classed as an outstanding teacher by Ofsted on my two inspections. I hope you can recognise how important the term outstanding is. It means elite and a cut above the rest. I use this ethos to drive my own ideologies and form coastal key housing. I've included our latest report of what your colleagues have said about us. I'm to understand that different things can help outweigh certain arguments in planning. And I'm asking that due to our outstanding services to young people, this could be considered. I am fully respectful of your work and policies. I understand the importance of planning and how BH24 is to help guide, serve and protect local communities. We follow your expectations that providers must have appropriate properties, be in the right location and work directly with the council. In my, in my opinion, we tick all three. Our home is beautiful. My partner Ruth ensures our home is decorated and furnished to the highest of standards. We never do things on the cheap and we are constantly investing back into our beautiful home. Upon our first ever meeting with the council, they were taken back as to how unique our home 
home was. It differed from other homes in a positive way. Of recent, my partner designed with our residents how the new communal areas are to be decorated, and it looks fantastic. I must point out this was once my family home, so the building is, a, it's the building is personal to my partner and I. Our residents respect this because they can see how much effort that we put into our rooms and communal areas. I've worked in places where this is not the case, and the children treat it with little respect because that's how they're made to feel. We have a great relationship with Blackpool Children's Services. They have highlighted and stressed that our provision is very much needed and we are recognised as one of the best providers. They want to continue to place Blackpool children with coastal key housing. Moving forward, we will be happy, we will be happy to continue our commitment to local, young, uh, to local young people and enter a Section 106 agreement with Blackpool Council to ensure any potential referrals from other councils are thoroughly discussed with Blackpool. This ensures Blackpool children will take priority over out of area placement. Susan Parker came to visit our house last week and we feel that she was impressed with us with the service that we provide uh, and that we've lived up to our outstanding reputation. There is a mutual understanding and sympathy between planning and placement. We wanted her to fully understand the difference between, semi between a semi-independent provision and a children's home. I believe in doing things the proper and correct way. Upon setting, upon setting up our home, we sought advice from all the re relevant parties, including yourself. We were told that we did not need planning permission, and we were then directed onto housing to acquire about a HMO, which again, we did not need. We worked with the placements team to find out exactly what was needed, uh, and, and they believed that our area was suitable. I would, I would not have proceeded if any of the above posed any problem. I, didn't, I did the honourable thing and informed all of our neighbours and made sure that they were comfortable with what, with what we were doing. We have maintained fantastic relationships with the people on our block and myself and residents are well liked. The, uh, the hotels commenting against our application are a few streets up and they had no idea we were there until we were featured in, in the Gazette for this planning application. There have been problems with two other semi-independent homes in the area and we are tarnished with their poor management and not so good reputation. Our primary reason for this application was due to another provider setting up directly next door to us. This was not done in the correct way and nor were any, of, were any part of the council informed. You're aware of Northern Community Pathways and they've appeared in, in a previous application. You'll also be made aware of their reputation and the troubles that local residents have within their service. They are the primary reason for this application. I was horrified that this was happening and intended to take every measure to protect our children. I protested from the first opportunity to planning and children's services and was advised by both services to apply for C2 planning. Our home and residents and staff suffer daily, yet we are still continuing to provide an outstanding service. If you were in my position, what would you have done? I feel if we are, I feel we are now being penalised for following the right, the right procedures. This is Jordan. Yeah, um, so <clears throat> we've always been aware of Dahl House, as they were within 400 metres of our home, and I even spent a short time working there myself a few years ago during my time in San Castle Care. My response to paragraph 13.2 of the agenda regarding the over-concentration of specialist uses in the immediate vicinity which would be detrimental to the character of the area, is that having both worked at Dahl House myself and having spoken last month with an official at Sandcastle Care, I must stress that the specialist use of Dahl House contrasts drastically to our specialist use in that our service is a supported living service for care leavers aged 16 to 18 as a next step before independence, whereas Dahl House is a residential care home for children from the age of four upwards who require round-the-clock care and have a range of learning, emotional and physical needs. In response to the concerns that around young people from the two homes congregating, I feel that because of the contrast in, in residence between our home and the residence at our house, this is extremely unlikely to ever be a problem. I understand that legal advice was sought by planning relation as to semi-independent children's homes being the same. Although we are caring people, we do not provide care, we provide support. Although we would like to be regulated, we can only go off what I've said advice. But Jordan, just to highlight, you've got a minute remaining. Okay. So yeah. Um, you, you can see on the care versus support table in offsets, uh, in offsets and I say the clear differences between a, a service offering care and a service offering support. It's our final paragraph. Being a Leighton lad myself, I truly, I believe truly in Blackpool children. Blackpool is my home and I celebrate this at every opportunity. My staff are fellow Sangronians and they love their hometown. All but one of our residents have been from Lancashire or Blackpool. The majority have been from Blackpool. In our two years and eight months of operation as at today, 16 children have passed for our service. We've had 12 positive outcomes as four are still living with us. They have left with the skills to be respectful individuals and part of a fantastic black and to be part of our black, fantastic blackpool communities. Some have jobs, others are in education, and others and what one is about to embark in, into motherhood and another is expecting. We still engage with our residents after they have left. They are part of our lives. We are preventing children from being left in chaotic communities or even worse, homelessness. And um, think back to when you were 18. Some of you may have been able to, some of you may have been ready to leave home. I certainly wasn't. I had my family to support me and we and, and, and we act as theirs. Thank you for listening. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for those very passionate representations to committee. Uh, I don't think any of us doubts the quality of the service you provide, and it's evident that the council, through its children's department, is very satisfied with how you conduct your business. Uh, but we are a planning committee, and we have to follow policy. Uh, where and here, in this case. Uh, that policy gets you on the wrong side of the line. And as you know, the committee has been recommended in, in following its policy to refuse your application. I don't know whether Susan Parker wishes to come back on those remarks. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Jeff, the only thing I want to come back on um, is is the comment about Dahl House. Obviously, I don't think we're disputing the, the quality of the house. As I said, I, I did um, visit it. It's very nicely appointed, and we do understand that Children's Services um, have a good working relationship with, with the the company. Um, but in just in terms of Dahl House, um, it was explained to me at my visit that it is it is used for children with particular. Um, needs and disabilities in planning terms much as it may be targeted at children with those specific needs it is still a children's home and it could revert to a standard children's home or indeed a semi-independent home um, without requiring planning permission that's about that's the advice that we've had from the barrister um, obviously I, I went into more detail last month about um, the reasoning for for the uh, children's homes and semi-independent living being uh, classified as being the same kind of specialist use but it just extends to Dahl House the fact that they do have those particular needs they are still young people under the age of 18 requiring care and so they, they would still come under this same classification thank you thank you very much Susan I'm going to open it up to the committee to debate the issue uh, Councillor Andrew Stansfield come in please <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. <clears throat> I think what we've got here is a, a, a children's home that was set up and has unfortunately been fallen foul of a change in regulation. Um, if they were in, when they opened <clears throat> uh, three years ago, they were informed that they didn't need planning permission, so they were quite within the right to open it. Um, at some point during that, uh, that time, Obviously, the regulations have changed, and they now require the permission. Um, having worked in the sector of children's care and in children's homes, I know how bad it is when a child is moved for whatever reason, um, and it's not good. the out The outcomes are never never positive when you have to move a child for for any reason whatsoever. Um, and I think in this particular case, what you've got is a first class service which we've been working with i know it's very unfortunate that they are on the wrong side of the rule but it's a service that we've worked with as far as blackpool council is concerned ofsted have inspected as we've heard and classed it as outstanding we've now got a tr problem that if we do go with the officer's recommendation to refuse we will end up with a property there which is losing staff, the movement of children, and that it won't be viable to operate with any less than what they are operating now. To be honest with you, in my opinion, the status of how if it operating now and being allowed to continue to operate by approving uh, the usage far outweighs anything of be of actually laying down a law that says no we must refuse we had this at the last meeting with two children's homes that didn't go down well with me at all because we've, we we gave them plan permission and then took it away from them in this particular case they were told they didn't need it they've operated correctly they've not gone and done their own thing they've done everything that we've heard by the book as it was at the time. And I think it's just, it's not even right to even consider the refusal of it. It's got to be that this has got to be a priority. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stansfield. I'm going to ask Susan to come back in 
And then I'm going to take Councillor O'Hara, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Um, just on the point of the Ofsted registration, I, I think uh, Mr Meehan said that he was Ofsted uh, inspected when he was a teacher. The use that he operates at the moment isn't subject to Ofsted regulation, so it's not been given an Ofsted assessment. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Councillor O'Hara. Yeah, I'm fully in agreement with what uh, Councillor Sansfield has said. It's extenuating circumstances, and it seems that they've been working with the council since 2016. I know it says they've only been home since 2018, but they've, they've been at this for five years, building up something that's been an advantage to Blackpool and seems to be doing a really good service to Blackpool. And I think this, the extenuating circumstances really do count in this situation, and I'm totally in agreement with Councillor Stansfield. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Robertson. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to say I'm in total agreement with my colleagues on this one. The, act, the actual property is in a good location because you have the local shops nearby, you have the transport nearby. Um, I don't see any issues why we can't keep this property going as it is. I think it's perfect for for the, the occupation that it does. And also the work the people that own it have done a great job in the last three years of keeping it going. And I'm all I'm all for this this property to keep carrying on as it is. Thank you. I've got to remind members that we have had over recent months a very detailed examination of our position on children's homes and we have adopted a policy which tries to balance the needs of that industry with the needs of local people. And that's why we have a policy limiting, limiting the opening of children's homes within 400 yards. And of course, this application falls within that policy uh, remit. Um, obviously, at times, if the committee refuses an application, it is always open to the applicant to go on appeal. And if his case uh, is strong, and if an inspector finds that there are extenuating circumstances, maybe an outcome more amenable to his wishes comes out. But always appeals can be useful for the department and for ourselves, because it's an independent view on our policy and the special um, pleading of the applicant balancing the policy and the needs. And uh, it's a time like that we find out how solid our policy is uh, constituted and it's good all round. Um, I only say that <laughs> just to stress and point out the obvious. Uh, we are dealing with a recommendation from our planning team uh, to refuse this application. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Hugo to come in. Thank you, Chair. Um, totally um, accept and, and thank you for reminding us about the policy. However, it, it's my view, similar to my colleagues, that on this instance, the needs of the children um, outweigh the, the letter of the policy. Um, and I think we would be cutting our nose to spite our face, for want of a better phrase, if we were to refuse this um exemplary provision um, whilst other ones are operating and not providing such a fantastic service. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Susan Parker to come in again on those comments. Thank you, Chair. It's, it's really just a point of clarification again that we would be granting planning permission for the use of this property. It's not the operator and whatever approach we take here will have an impact on the approach that we take at number nine. So it, it's just to, to remind neighbours really, that mem members really, that we are looking at um, the use rather than the actual operator. Thank you. Chairman, I think Councillor Farrell, Baker. Far no, I think Councillor Farrell indicated previously. Do you wish to speak, Councillor? Councillor no, Farrell? 
Thank you. I was actually just going to say that I agree with all the comments that have been made already this evening. Thank you. Fine. Uh, Councillor, I think it's Councillor Robertson, was it, coming in? No, Councillor Baker? Councillor Baker? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I again agree with everybody that's been speaking. Um, well, the point really is, if if they'd have uh, this business had been uh, advised to apply for planning permission when they started several years ago, they would probably have got those uh, the permission to to continue. So it just seems to me that we're uh, just delaying something here. Um, the four hundred meter rule, yeah, is a good one, and we need to be uh, careful about that in the future. But I think in this particular case, we should. Um, Approve it. Thank you. Councillor Andrew Stansfield again. Thank you very much, Chair. It's with reference to, we, we, we are quite aware that a few uh, meetings ago we did pass a policy uh, on the 400 metre rule. But I think in this particular case, it could look like we've, made, we've, we've brought the ruling in to try and get some, rid of something that we don't want. And that's unfortunately that's not the case in this particular case this one was operational before and i think it should stand prior to that um with reference to the one that's next door that one's come up since um our policy was made and therefore i think we can quite easily apply the policy to that but i think we'll find it very difficult to apply the policy to this retrospectively um it, it just hurts that you know, it's going to look as if we brought a policy in to try and close a children's home in this particular case, and that it's not what we want it to look like. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, are there any more contributions? Uh, I have nothing in front of uh, us at the moment by way of motion. Does anybody wish to move anything? <laughs> Councillor Andrew Stansfield. Yeah, I wish to uh, to move that we approve the recommendation, uh, the the uh, permission, and allow them to operate as they have done. Um, as I feel that by closing it, um, the benefits would be detrimental to the operators and the children and everything everything that goes along with it um, against uh, BH24. And I really do think that uh, it should be allowed to continue. Is that seconded? Councillor O'Hara. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, I'll second it. I, yeah. I, I just think we I'm need to have the proviso that the 106 agreement is uh, is tied in. That was what I was just going to check. So, yes, um, with the 106 agreement. With the 106 agreement restricting use to children from Blackpool or with the approval of the council's children's services department as similar application have been granted on the grounds that there are sufficient grounds for an exemption from the policy to exist in this case. Is that an accurate summary, Council? Ex ex excellent, excellently put, Lennox. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Before we proceed, I'm going to ask uh, Susan Parker again to come in, probably okay. for a final time. No, no, uh, councillors and Lennox have just anticipated what I was going to raise a section 106 and it being a resolution rather than a permission. So, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to put the, the motion to the vote that the application be approved. Those in favour, please show. Lennox is going to count your One, two, three, hand, four, hands. Five, six, seven. That's seven in favour. Any against? None against. I assume you're abstaining, Chairman. So I'm abstaining, yes. So that is approved. So um, did you understand what was this decision, Mr Meehan? Thank you so much. Yep. Congratulations, Thank you. Mr Meehan and colleague. Thank you. Thank you. We've got an approval. Yep. I'll now remove you from the meeting, okay? Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Well, we've made somebody happy tonight, and uh, you can see the relief ebbing round their shoulders with that decision. Um, 
You can all feel very happy. Colleagues and, colleagues. <laughs> and we'll pass on now, colleagues, to item seven on your agenda. Um, a major issue. Um, I think we've got some representations from the applicants' advisors to come in and leave that for Lennox to bring them into the room. They're, they're all they're here now. Um, so I believe Mr. Horner, Mr. Harvey are going to be the two people who make representations to you and also be here to answer any questions you might have, along with um, Mr. Gerard and Mr. Hill from our Growth and Prosperity team. Okay. Um, so I'll hand you back over to Susan. Welcome, uh, gentlemen. Uh, the matter will be presented by our Chief Planner, uh, Susan, but before I bring her in, um, I think it ought to be noted that this is a major development, a major milestone in the Council's wish to try and improve the employment prospects of our citizens and to be part of that major development, part of which obviously Bickerstaff House, um, uh, the improvement to the car park, uh, the Sainsbury development, all part of a concept and a piece of strategic thinking for the future of the borough. And uh, it's uh, something that we've been hoping will come along and uh, maybe this is the start of something big. Susan Parker, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'm going to try and uh, share my PowerPoint again. There we go. I hope everyone can see that. Um, this is our second major application of the year, and the site should be familiar to everybody. It's the car park between East Topping Street and Cookson Street, the properties at the northern end of King Street, and the hop are the properties immediately behind it. The proposal is for a seven story office building and medical centre, surface car parking, public rail works, and the use of the hop as a dental surgery. The application is a hybrid, our second hybrid of the year, um, meaning that the office block, car park and external works are subject to an outline application with only the works to the hop being detailed under a full application. As you might imagine, for a scheme of this scale, there have been a number of competing considerations and these are detailed in the office report. In principle, the, off the development of office floor space, a medical centre and a dental surgery within the town centre is acceptable. Medical facilities are not expressly referenced in the Talbot Gateway planning policies, but they are compatible with the overall regeneration aims for the area. The building would be substantial in scale, and so it's inevitable that it would have some impact on the amenity of neighbouring properties through loss of light and privacy. The main impact would be on the properties fronting Topping Street, which would lose sunlight in the early part of the day, and there would be some impact on privacy but it must be remembered that the building would provide office accommodation, and so any overlooking could be expected to be more passive in nature. The visual impact of the proposal is a significant issue for consideration, and the potential impact on heritage assets sits alongside this. The building, by sheer virtue of its size, would block out views of the tower from George Street to the east, and from Charles Street, the building would be a prominent feature in the townscape, that's the view from George Street. Um, from Charles Street, it would be a prominent feature and would compete with the Tower and St John's Church for prominence. And within the conservation area, which you can see from the, uh, the, the image at the top there, it would be a dominant feature within the backdrop. However, this visual impact could be mitigated to a significant degree by high quality design of both the building and the public realm, Modern urban areas are characterised by the contrast between new and historic buildings and between tall and traditional structures. And the Talbot Gateway area is intended to be modern and progressive and the type of building proposed would fit with that character. It should also be noted that the impact of, on views of the tower would principally be felt by local residents rather than visitors. Um, anyone from Blackpool knows that the tower is, is always there in the background and residents do become accustomed to glimpsed views um, and as such the views can't be afforded the same significance as the strategic views that are of, of importance to, to visitors to the town. 
In terms of heritage, the site is surrounded by assets, including the, the conservation area and a number of locally listed buildings and falls within the setting of statutorily listed buildings. And the HOP itself is also a locally listed building. And the heritage impact is closely tied to the visual impact and can be mitigated to a significant degree by good design. Nevertheless, it must be acknowledged that the scheme would have some degree of negative amenity, visual and heritage impact. Particular consideration has also been given to the impact on highway function and parking. The proposal would result in a loss of car parking, whilst also increasing traffic generation and parking demand. Members may be aware that wider proposals are being developed for an improved town centre access strategy and town centre parking strategy, and there would be a degree of interface between this scheme and those initiatives. To reflect this wider situation, a multi-stage condition has been proposed, which allows the for, which follows the form of a typical land contamination condition. And this would enable additional work to be carried out and agreed and a scheme of mitigation measures to then be developed and agreed as a result. And equally, until new parking provision is developed in the wider area, a strategy of car park management interventions would need to be considered to mitigate impact and ensure that the town centre does not suffer unduly from the reduced parking provision. And these actions would limit the impact as much as is possible, but it is still likely that the proposal would result in an increase in traffic and parking demand. No unacceptable impacts relating to drainage, flood risk, biodiversity or environmental quality are anticipated. The impacts I've outlined so far must obviously be balanced against the significant benefits of the scheme. The office floor space proposed has the potential to bring 1,735 jobs into the town centre and the medical centre would add to this number. A thriving business district brings multiple knock-on economic benefits to a centre through increased patronage of shops, cafes, service facilities, leisure offers and car parking. Equally importantly, it contributes to the vibrancy of a centre, promotes investor confidence and can act as a catalyst for further regeneration. This development would further establish Talbot Gateway as the northern anchor to the town centre and support wider regeneration objectives to reinforce Blackpool's role as a sub-regional hub for the Fylde Coast. These positive benefits are considered to significantly outweigh the negative impacts, particularly as these could be significantly reduced through mitigation. In respect of the HOP, if I move on to the final slides, um, th there is an extension proposed at the rear of the, sh the HOP following partial demolition. Um, th this application is, is far more straightforward and no unacceptable impacts are anticipated and the design is considered to be uh, sympathetic to the design of the building as a whole. It should be noted that one objection has been received against the application. This is detailed in the officer report and the issues raised are addressed through the assessment. In considering the application as a whole, the benefits are considered to significantly outweigh any negative impacts. The application has been accompanied by an environmental statement, which has also concluded that no unacceptable impacts would result. And as such, the officer recommendation is one of approval, subject to the conditions listed in the report and on the update note. Now, this is, as I said, a hybrid application. And so the office building is proposed in outline form only. But we do have an artist's impression that I can share with you of the building. There we go. Now, I have to stress that is just an artist's impression. Um, reserved matters will be the point at which the design and appearance of the building is finalised. But that is an indication of the sort of thing that is proposed. So it's purely illustrative, but we did think that you'd be interested to see it. So there you go. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, artists' impressions are always a snare for the unwary in, in our experience of some sites in town and elsewhere, but it does look pretty good. And I'm sure Carl Carrington will have his BDI on the plans when they're fully worked up and will get his usual sympathetic advice to development that is good and sustainable. Lovely word. Um, the recommendation then is for to approve um, the outline application and to approve the full application for the hop in end of the development. I don't know whether uh, the applicants' agents want to have a word or are they content uh, to see what the views of the committee are before they add their opinion. Oh, Mr. McBride, do you want to come in? No. No. 
Right. Okay, Mr. Horner and Mr. Harvey, did you want to come in? Yes, I'll just, if, if I may, th thanks, Lois. Th thank you, Chair, and good evening, everybody. J just really to say that, um, that, that MUSE obviously is the development partner of the Council. We've been working alongside the Council in partnership since uh, 2009, and the Talbot Gateway area of Blackpool was a, was a very different looking place then. And, and since, as you rightly uh, say, Chair, we, we have delivered the Sainsbury's uh, food store, associated car park, number one Bickerstaff uh, Square, also the refurbishment of the Talbot Road multi-storey car park and associated public realm, all as phase one. And now we are on site currently with phase two, where we've recently demolished the Wilco building. Uh, and the uh, the new hotel will shortly be coming out of the ground. And this is a very important planning application before you tonight, which represents effectively phase three of the Talbot Gateway regeneration area. And has, uh, as has already been stated, could potentially deliver up to 2,000 jobs uh, in the town centre, which would be fantastic uh, for, for Blackpool. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to just hand over to my colleague, Ed, Ed Harvey, who will give a, a brief statement in, in further in support of the application. Yes, indeed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thanks for that, Mike. Um, my name's Ed Harvey, and I'm the agent that's on behalf of Muse. Um, Mike's obviously already introduced us, so I just wanted to say a few words in support of the application. Um, as Susan mentioned in the introduction, the proposal is a hybrid application. Um, outline permission is sought for the new office building medical centre with the creation of public realm. Full permission is sought for the change of use of the hop to a dental practice. As the new office building is applied for in outline, we're seeking consent at this stage for the principle of development together with certain development parameters. The detailed design of the scheme will need to be agreed with the council through a subsequent reserve matters application, albeit you've seen an illustration um, of our thinking at this stage. Now, the development of Talbot Gateway is obviously a key regeneration priority for the council. The principle of new mixed use development across a wider area was established by the grant of the land permission in 2010. This was for a range of uses and building heights um, and included offices. The proposed development accords with the Council's regeneration ambitions for the area. The new office building is required to meet current occupier demand. It will give rise to significant economic benefits, not least by bringing around or up to 2,000 workers into the town centre. It would also support local shops and services. The sensitive conversion of the hop will ensure an existing dental surgery can be retained in the area as well. A full suite of technical assessments was submitted with the application which concluded there are no technical reasons why planning permission should not be granted. Importantly, there are no objections from consultees. This includes Historic England and the Council's Heritage Officer. Furthermore, the Civic Trust has responded to the application, confirming support for the proposals. Summing up, the application has been assessed in detail by officers and consultees, and the recommendation is to approve. On this basis, we respectfully request that planning permission is granted. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that sets the context of the development as far as our developer partners are concerned. Right, well, I'm going to have the happy privilege of moving that this hybrid application be approved. Do I have a seconder? That's seconded by Councillor Hugo. So, sorry, Chair, can I just ask something before you go ahead? Surely. The multi the multiversity uh, campus back in August, it was in the paper that it was going to go ahead. Is this in the same place or is it in a different place? No, it's a different uh, site altogether. I think Mr. <laughs> Gerard was going to respond. But, um, Indeed. Come in if you yeah. would. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just to uh, let you know, the multiversity is a scheme that's being worked up for which we've got funding from the town deal. And the actual site hasn't been identified yet because the process through which we're going is undertaken that, but it is certainly not this site. Uh, it's going to be in and around the town centre, of course, to add to the development uh, that this would bring. I'm just going to just throw another piece of information in while I've got the floor, Chair, that um, 
uh, there's actually going to be two and a half thousand jobs there in the way in which they're going to utilize the building, but 1,700 uh, desk spaces. Thank you very much indeed, Nick. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that. First to open the batting. Anybody? Councillor Hugo, I think it was. No. Did you want to come in? Sorry, uh, Chair. No, I was second in. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Councillor Stansfield. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, it's, it's just a, lot, a couple of little concerns and I mean, we know that the uh, the area does require developments, and it's all part of the uh, the bigger picture. What does sort of concern me at this moment in time is two things which have come out tonight: the loss of parking spaces, and we're going to increase jobs. Um, increasing jobs is always good, but how are we going to get them into the town? And the other thing that comes with it is the size of this building. For the last eighteen months, offices have been closed. No one's looking to new premises. Is this still as viable for this office space now with the current working of businesses? And is, it, is, is that the way businesses are going to work in the future? Because if they are, we could end up with a lot of empty offices, uh, which we can't fill. And, and that does concern me that we're going to have a new development with empty space in it. And also the fact that we're going to bring these people in but say, I'm terribly sorry, but you can't bring your cars because we've no parking space because we've just taken it all over to put your nice new offices. Um, that does concern me, that. I just I, I just want to throw that in the mix. Thank you, well, Chair. Thank you, you Councillor Stansfield. I Mr. don't know what Mr. everybody... Mr. I'm, Gerard was indicating he can respond. Yes, I was going to bring him in, but uh, there it is. Nick, do you want to come in again? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, I think the... Um, We've, there is an undisclosure agreement, which is why we cannot tell you who the people with whom we are negotiating. But the point I just made about the difference between the desk spaces and the jobs is an indication as to how they're intending to utilise the building. In other words, uh, to maximise it, its use. One of the first things that we did with them um, was to establish whether or not uh, this building was certainly during the COVID, because the negotiations really picked up actually during the pandemic, was to establish with them, um, is this the size of building they wanted? And they've undertaken a thorough review, if you like, of their post-COVID strategy for the utilisation of their offices. So uh, uh, Councillor Stansfield's point was very much on our minds and their minds uh, to make sure that this building was utilised. And I can assure you that uh, that has been fully taken into account by them. So th this will not be an underused building. I think the second point, obviously, about car parking is really important. Um, and um, for those of you with not very long memories, but if you, <laughs> on the 25th of February 2019, um, uh, we brought a report to the executive for a um, car parking strategy for the town centre and £16 million uh, was approved by the executive capital expenditure to uh, address the issue of town centre car parking. Uh, and the reason that expenditure was committed at that stage was very much with this development in mind, as well as other developments in and around Talbot Gateway. So we are, we've actually got plans in place to expand the capacity uh, to address any future demands. And I suppose the other related point to say is this is the most sustainable of locations in Blackpool where you can get to by bus, tr tram uh, and train, um, you know, literally just over the road. Um, so uh, obviously most of the workers will be able to take advantage of that. But of course, cars will still be relevant and hence the car parking strategy. Thank you very much indeed, Nick. Um, when it's said that um, people will still be working from home, I don't know what colleagues feel, but it's so much nicer to meet people in a meeting when you're actually there in the room. And I suspect that despite all the fun of being able to school your kids at home, um, you know, two or three days a week, whatever it is, I think most people, most people will still want to meet 
uh, in working hours with their colleagues. So I, do, I think it, it's a piece of social history which may or may not materialise, but I, I do hope Councillor Stansfield uh, isn't too jaundiced to think that we won't be meeting again face to face. Right, uh, Councillor O'Hara. Just, just a quick comment with the new green strategies that we're getting. I'm a little worried that people want more traffic in the town centre. I'm hoping this uh, car parking uh, situation is going to be looked at to, to keep as much many vehicles as possible away from the town centre and get the use of public transport, etc., more used because uh, every town in the country is trying to cut down on the amount of traffic that's going into the town centres. I'm sure that's a very strong point and one that we'll all have sympathy with. At next, any contribution? Are we happy to proceed? Right, colleagues, it's been moved and seconded that we approve this hybrid application. Would those of you in favour please show? And Lennox will count. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, that's unanimous. <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed for that. I'm sure um, uh, Muse and colleagues will be very pleased with that. And indeed, the whole of the uh, council uh, will be uh, pleased that that's gone through. Um, there's already a, a pile driver in place on the Wilkinson site this afternoon. So after the demolition there, uh, the case continues. Um, a very important decision. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Right. I'm just going to remove the relevant public speakers and I'm also going to remove Councillor Stansfield and Councillor Hugo, who have declared DPIs in the matter, the last application. Okay. Bye-bye for the moment. Well, they're not coming back. Chairman, because it's the end of the meeting yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Okay. The smiles on Mr. Horner's face. I right. Think. We're now ready, Chairman. Right. It's uh, agenda item eight. Um, three Sherborne Road. It's for an application for use of the premises as a single private dwelling house. Um, and I'm going to ask, as usual, for Susan. Parker to introduce it for us. Thank you, Chairman. As usual, I'm trying to get my PowerPoint to cooperate. Okay, the final application it relates to a two-storey end of terrace property on the corner of Sherborne Road and St Paul's Road. It's a relatively straightforward and uncontroversial application that's only before committee because of Councillor Hugo's connection to Street Life, who are the applicant. From the mid-80s, the property was in use as a care home. Planning permission was granted in 1997 for use as a standard house, but it does not appear that this permission was ever implemented. As such, the lawful use of the property was within use class C2, meaning that planning permission is required to change it to a C3 dwelling. The internal layout would offer two lounge areas, a kitchen, a dining room, an ensuite bedroom and a store at ground floor level and five bedrooms, two of which would be ensuite, would be provided at first floor level, giving six bedrooms in total. This layout is considered to be consistent with single household occupation. It is understood that the property would be occupied by volunteers at the local street life charity who would live together and form a single household. Although Street Life is a charity that supports the homeless, the property would not be used to accommodate homeless people. As planning permissions run with the land and not the applicant, a condition is recommended that would remove permitted development rights, thereby preventing the property from being used as a small HMO in the future. There have been no objections to the proposal. As such, members are respectfully recommended to grant planning permission subject to the conditions listed. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, certainly an uncontroversial application, one would think, and I'd like to ask somebody to move approval. Councillor O'Hara and Councillor Robertson seconds. I'll put it to the vote straight away. Those in favour, please show. I'll count properly this time. That's unanimous, Chairman, so that's carried. Thank you very much indeed, colleagues. 
Um, and after an eventful evening, uh, I can close the meeting and thank you very much indeed for you being part of Blackpool's future. Yes.